This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com Okay, good morning everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Baruch Ma'am We have Mamish, an amazing topic today. It's not long, but the Hashgacha is really uncanny. You can't, you know, what would you say would be the perfect Eon share to have on a blot of Ksubis this week? You say, what do you mean? A Rosh Hashanah that comes out on Shabbos. Okay, that we know. We all would have guessed that. The question is, how can, you, how can it connect to this page? Okay, you'll see, it fits like a glove. Let's review, but for this we're going to have to review something on Nun Beis and on Nun Aleph. The Gemara says, uh, the Gemara is trying to, the Gemara has the following question. There's a Takana of the Chachamim called Ksubas Benin Dichren. What's Ksubas Benin Dichren? Ksubas ben Indichron is that if a man has two wives, <clears throat> he gave each one a ksuba. Let's say he gave one uh, 800 zuz and the other one uh, 1,000 zuz. And this woman came in with a dowry of a million goats. The other one brought in 500 goats. And they both die. So he inherits both of them. When he dies, technically, his children should inherit his whole estate, including both ksubas, Equally. But the Chachamim wanted, the Chacham were afraid that if uh, a father who's going to make his daughter desirable for marriage is going to give his daughter a dowry, and then if her daughter would die and the husband would inherit it, and then kids from a different marriage would inherit that, a father would might be reluctant to give a big dowry. So in order to encourage big dowries, the Chachamim made a takana of Ksubas benin dechren. Namely, that ultimately, if the woman dies and then the husband dies, the children that she had from her marriage with that guy will inherit her Ksuba. That's called Ksubas benin dechren, and the motivation is, Kedei sheyach adam yichtav labita kibnai. The Gemara had a kasha on that, because let's think about what's taking place over here. The Gemara's kasha is, wait a second, this father who's giving his daughter a dowry, he has a lot of money. He has a lot of assets. He has resources. He has properties. Should he die, who's going to inherit it? His sons. But now by writing it to his daughter, he's basically taking possessions away from his son and giving it to his daughter. So the Gemara had a kasha. Mi ika midi. Is there something that the Torah says a son inherits and the daughter doesn't inherit? And the Chachamim come along and they make a takana that the daughter should inherit? So this question troubled me. What do you mean? The rabbis are not saying that even though the Torah says the son inherits and not the daughter, the rabbis are not saying the daughter inherits. The rabbis are just encouraging the father to give their daughter bigger presents so that people should want to marry them. They're not taking away Yerusha. The, the father's alive. What do you mean? Is there something that the Torah says the boys inherit and now the Torah is saying no, the girl inherits? But apparently, since ultimately, if one day he dies, the boys are supposed to get all his money, if the Chachamim are going to be masaking something that the guy is giving money to his daughters, it's going to come out that, you know, in the end of the day, instead of his sons ultimately inheriting this, the daughters are. But, but realize that it's not like the Chachamim are taking anything away from a Yerusha. It's an ultimate, it's an eventual Yerusha. From here we see, Rabbi Isai, a very important principle. And that is, if there's no precedent in the Chumash, the rabbis are severely limited in any legislation. Even though, this is not like the Torah says, you're not allowed to give a gift to your daughter. What's the Gemara's Kasha? Does the Torah say you're not allowed to give a gift to your daughter? The Torah says, whatever is left when you die, goes to your sons, not your daughters. So what's the problem? You're now giving the gift while you're alive. But since eventually, if you die, that property would have gone to your sons, if there's no precedent in the Chumash, then we can't legislate that you should give the property to your daughters. And the Gemara says, in fact, there is precedent in the Navi Yermia, where it sounds like you have to do whatever you can to marry off your daughter. And what could that mean other than giving her money? Fine, that's the first thing I want to point out from this Gemara. The next Yisoyed. 
The Gemara has various questions about Ksubas ben Dichrin, that why don't girls inherit? The Gemara says it's like Yerusha. Why do you on, only inherit from Meshubadim? Because it's like... Uh, right? right? The Gemara asks, why don't girls inherit? It's like Yerusha. Why don't you inherit... Why doesn't it go to Metaltalin? It's like a Ksuba. Why... Why don't you uh, collect from a Shubadim? No, because it's like Yerusha also. And then the Gemara asks the question, Why does the din of Ksubas bin Endichrin only apply if after the children of both respective wives divide, there's still a dinar left for them to split? Right? There has, there's a din, it has, there has to be Moisar dinar. If there's no Moisar dinar, then we don't know, apply the Takana of Ksubas bin Endichrin. Why do you need Moisar dinar? Says the Gemara, because if there's no Moisar dinar, we're being Oiker Yerusha de Iraisa. Because the guy died. He lives over, besides the Ksuba, if he doesn't leave anything over, then you're not being Mekayim, the Din de Iraisa that Yerusha is divided equally. So the Chachamim seem to be limited. This is another limitation of the Chachamim. Not only are they limited, that if we don't have a precedent that you could give gifts to your daughter, you won't be allowed to. But in a, in a situation where the only thing that's being uh, inherited is the Ksuba, we don't apply the Takana of Ksubas ben Dichrin because you cannot be Oikar Yerusha da Iraisa. So from this Gemara we learn two principles. That when the Chachamim legislate, number one, there must be precedence in the Torah. Number two, they cannot be Oikar um, they cannot be oiker concepts completely. They can only be oiker if to a certain extent there's still a remnant of the Dindai Raisa. Now to me, this sounds very, very similar to what is known as Hataz Hayadua, the well-known Taz. We actually once spoke about it on a Wednesday night, and it was a Taz that I, I became so excited about, and then I saw Rav David Cohen of Coney Island Avenue wrote an entire Sefer on this Taz, the name of the Sefer is Hataz Hayadua. It was even out of print, and he sent me, I called him up, Rabbi Pesach Kron was there, he answered the phone, he explained to Rabbi David Kohn what I was looking for, and he sent it in a, in a vehicle, and he sent me extra to give out at the Shir. The Taz talks about this principle three times in Shulchan Aruch, and this Gemara seems to be a riot to the Taz, and we're going to see right now. Um, here we go. Um, and you're going to see this has, if you want to know what this has to do with Rosh Hashanah, it could not have anything more to do with Rosh Hashanah. The halach is we don't blow uh, shofar this coming Shabbos. Shabbos is going to come and you're not, we're not going to hear the shofar. Why? Takana de Rabba. Mishim Shema Yitlenu Biyadoi Lelech Eitzel Baki. Because we're afraid you might take it to a Baki. Takana de Rabba. You might take it in your hand to ask a Baki, Lomoy, to teach you how to do it. Viyavireno Dalaramus Vishasaram. There's a famous Kasha on this. The Kasha of the Mizrahi. Rebellio Mizrahi, the foremost commentary on Rashi. The Hiksha HaMizrahi, this is the Taz Arachayim Simen Tav Kuf Peiches. By the way, Hilchai Shoifar is in Tav Kuf Peivav, Rabbi Yaakov Emden says, Gematria Shoifar. He asks, Biyam Tav Nami, Nigzar Shema Yisakein Kleishir. Stam, you should always, it should always be prohibited to blow Shoifar on Yom Tif, because you're now to play a musical instrument on Yom Tif because you might come to fix it. So why don't we say, if we're willing to forgo the Mitzvah Dei Raisa of Shoifar, because Shema Yavirena Daud Amos, then we should always forgo the Mitzvah of Shoifar because Shema Yisak and Klishar. This is the famous Kasha of the Mizrahi. V'herach the Mizrahi speaks at length. Ula v'soif Tiritz klum. The Mizrahi doesn't give an answer. Says the Taz, Daiti, Mitzvah. 
since shofar is not a musical instrument, but is for a mitzvah, then it never comes under the category of musical instruments. The rabbis only legislated on musical instruments. The rabbis never said, you're not allowed to ride a bike on Yom Tif, I don't think. You know, I'm not saying you're allowed to. I don't think you should. Children should not be allowed to. But let's say, the rabbis never said that you can't use, you know those toothpicks with the string? It looks like a little harp. I don't think, you, maybe you're not allowed to because it might cause you to bleed. But there's no isser of handling that on Shabbos because oh, you, you, if you, it looks like a harp, so you might, uh, you might fix it. The answer is they only ask for musical instruments. They don't ask for strings. They, so they didn't answer, uh, ask for tubes, right? You know the paper towel thing? When you're finished with the paper towel, there's no, I don't know if that thing is muksa. Maybe it's muksa for a different reason. But what do you mean? It's a tube. The rabbis didn't ask for tubes. They asked for musical instruments. Shoifer is not a musical instrument. Al Ken Loy Gazer. That's the first answer of the Taz. We're going to focus on the second answer. The famous second answer of the Taz is Vaoid Nerli Lataritz. The Ein Lohem Ligzar Velakar Legamre Dvar Torah Shetzivsa Litkaya Beyomza. The rabbis cannot outright uproot a mitzvah in the Torah. There's a mitzvah in the Torah to blow shofar. So if you're going to make a gzera, shama yisak in klishir, then we would never blow the shofar. But the Torah says blow the shofar. The rabbis will see either they can't or they don't want to head, confront the Torah head on. The Torah says do something. The rabbis can't say no, we're going to be oikar at lagamri. I think it's very parallel to what we just saw in the Gemara, that even though there's a takana benin dichrin, but not if you're being oiker Yerusha legamri. There has to be moisar dinar. If there's not moisar dinar, then this is a violation of the taz. Ah, this would also answer the famous kasha the ran. You're now to blow shoifer on Shabbos shema yaver and amos. Why are you allowed to do mila on Shabbos? You might carry the knife. You might carry the baby. Yeah? So some answer, well, Mila is chal on the Bezdin. We're not goyzer on the Bezdin. V'tirates, V'loi gazunan, Shama yavra ating down as Rishas Rabbim. Ah, says the Taz HaYadu'a, L'fi Masha Kosafti Nicha. There's an explicit Pasuk in the Torah that you do Mila on Shabbos. What is that? Uvayoyim Hashmini Yimo Basara Lasai. We already know you do Mila and Shabbos. You already know there's a, there's a mitzvah Mila. Why does the Torah reiterate? It's a special drasha that te- teaches you do Mila and Shabbos. So, Loi Rot Sulaka Dvar Torah Beferush. The Chachamim, you see, look, look carefully. Not that they're not able to, they don't want to be Oikar Dvar Torah. Altsakzera. So, we have two illustrations of this. The Chachamim could say, don't blow shoifar when Rosh Hashanah comes out on Shabbos, because there's no explicit Pasuk that says you blow shoifar when Rosh Hashanah comes out on Shabbos. It just says you blow shoifar, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Shabbos. So the rabbis will come along and say, don't do it on Shabbos. But to make a gzera, Shema Yisak, and Kleshir, they'll be being oiker, the gzera, legamri, completely, under all circumstances. So that they don't want to do. And that's the reason why we don't make a gzera of Mila on Shabbos, because there's an explicit pasuk of Yom Hashmini Yimo Basar Alasai. By the way, the Taz reiterates this chiddush in Chosha Mishvat Simon Beis, as well as in Yeradeya Simon Kuf Yudzayin by having Hana from Chelav. I want to bring to your attention that the Shal Shuvas Heichal Yitzchak, Revizek Halevi Herzog, who has a very interesting chakira. Is the pshat Yesh lanu la'ayin be'etzem ha'klal shel ha'taz im ha'kavona shebedover ha'mefurish b'toyer laheter ein koyach biyad ha'chamim laser? Is it that the chamim don't have the ability to? Ela sheyesh l'makach, or they do? Ela sheim gadru la'atzmam they confine themselves k'dei shaloi lasseis makam l'tzedukim l'radois, because otherwise the 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 hamoynam will rebel. They're going to think the rabbis are out of control. So is it that they were not empowered? Or they choose not to? And he says the latter. He says they choose not to. Now this is, uh, this is what I was getting at. Now let's go back to Daphne Nalafamabes. And you're going to see 
Akasha Atsuma on the Taz. And I'm very happy today. What? What about Lula Venestric? Lula Venestric on the first day's day, right? So the rest of these are the Rabbanon. So Rabasi is asking, have a little Vanessa, the first day of the Iraisa. Yeah, um, all seven days are the Iraisa, B'mikdash. B'mikdash, all seven days are the Iraisa. So there's still, you're not being Oiker, Legamri. Okay? In America, that's why, um, yeah. And many G'daylam were Makbid to go to the Kaisal Hamaravi, all seven days of Sukkot. With a lulav to mekayim, lulav da'iraisa. And it could be it's an Indian. It's a taka. Many people go for berchas kaihanim. Perhaps more important is to go for lulav. You hear? Okay. Now we're coming to the question of the century. This is one of the most lambda shakashas you'll ever hear. I'm upset. I, I almost had it. I, I, when we were learning the Gemara, I, I, I didn't crystallize it. Actually, I was talking to my friend John Talansky. He told me Rabbi Kivager quotes it from the Taz, almost. I mean, he quotes the Shar HaMelech who asked this question on the Taz. That it's a kasha on the Taz. I want to share with you that I'm very happy because this all-time great Lamda Shakasha, I want to tell you who asks it, and hits the nail on the head better than I've seen in uh, any sefer, the Chida. This Givaldige Lom de Shekasha, the Rabbi Kiva Eger cites, is the Kasha the Chida. Okay, you ready? And he asks it in his sefer on Halacha, Berke Yosef. Avu HaDashmo, remember Avu HaDashmo? And Afnon Aleph from Abayz, Avu HaDashmo says, if a woman is raped, she's also her husband. Why? But she's ulanar leisasa davar. It says vihin leinispasa. She wasn't forced. That implies if she's forced, she's permitted. No, Avu Adishmo says we're afraid she started off being raped, and once she got into it, she did a baratzin. Okay, you hear this? Avu Adishmo says that a woman who's raped is usher to her husband. Comes Toysus. Please look at Toysus non alafama base. Is this din the Iraisa or the Rabbanon? This chshash of Avu Adish, bottom toysis, non from the base. This chshash of Shmuel, that we're afraid that maybe she did Barat sign. So Toysis says, what do you mean? It says chayshinon. We're worried. That implies the Rabbanon. Says Toysis, it has to be the Iraisa. Why? Because if it was only a din the Rabbanon, we're going to make a woman leave her husband because of a chashash to Rabbanon? The rabbis would never do such a thing. The rabbis would never, for a chashash to Rabbanon, take a woman away from her husband. Says Toysus, so therefore it has to be the Iraisa. Okay? And since it's a Raisa, therefore she's also to her husband. Question. The Gemara asks, according to Avu the Shmuel, but the Torah says that Oynes is mutter to her husband. To which the Gemara answers, eh, it's talking about where she was screaming the whole time. Question. What's Toysus' question? Let's, let's clarify Toysus' question. Toysus asks, What do you mean, how do you have a case of Oynes? But it's, right, the Gemara asks, according to Avua de Shmuel, how do you have Oynes de Shari Rachmana Hechemeshkachasla? Frag Toysus, what's the problem? It's only Asr Midrabanan! 
Taisa says, no, it has to be Dairaisa. Because if we're taking her away from her husband, that has to be Dairaisa. But Taisa says, Mashma, if it would have been Xera Drabanan, then we have an answer to the Gemara's Kasha. The Gemara wants to know, how do you have a woman who's nenas and permitted to her husband? The answer is, Midai Raisa she's permitted, and the rabbis answered it. That means Toysus is willing to entertain the possibility that even though the Torah says a woman who's raped is mutter to her husband, the rabbis answered it. Says the Chida, it's a raya against the Taz. Toysus has a kasha. Toysus's kasha is, what do you mean? Oynus to Shari Rachman Hechem what do you mean? Maybe Avu Dishmol is a Dindra Banan. Says the Chida from Taisus, we see he doesn't hold like the Taz. But what do you mean it's a Dindra Banan? The rabbis cannot come along and say that if the Torah says a woman who's raped is permitted to her husband, the rabbis can't come along and say she's also. We see from Taisus they could. It's a Raya against the Taz. Whose Kash is this? The Chida. It's really earlier, the Shar HaMelech. Kedushin and everything else. Kedushin is al Kedas Moshe Yisrael. We've had this concept that the Chacham have the ability to uproot a Kedushin because you're marrying Kedas Moshe Yisrael as opposed to. Uh... No, but right now, the Torah says that if a woman is raped, you're allowed to stay married to her. It seems like he would say. It's okay for the Chachamim to say you're not allowed to stay married to her. So we're on that part of it. So it's not going to help to say they're Oikar the Kedushin. But why is this woman not allowed to stay married to her husband if the Torah says she is allowed to stay married to her husband? Them, usually daughter eyes to the Chachamim try not to be Oikar. But by Kedushin, Bedafin Kedushin, they have the authority to do it because the Kedushin is Kedas Moshe Yisrael. They won't do it every single time. You only do it in certain scenarios, not in a case where she's technically supposed to be Mutter Midaraisa. No, the, the rabbis wouldn't do it in this. In this case, it, the fact that they're allowed to tamper with the Kedushin d- does not create an Isser for her, does not enable them to say, the Torah says she could stay in the house. How, why are the rabbis, uh, upro- uh, what are the rabbis kicking her out? Because they uprooted the Kedushin? That doesn't make her Asser to him. Even with their ability to be Oikar the Kedushin, but we're not on the Kedushin step. We're on, could the lady stay in the house with him? So how could the Chachamim answer it? Look at the Kasha the Chidon side. It says, The Gemara asks, Afagav the Chayshinon Ka'amar. Ah, it's only Drabanon. Mashallah, the Midaraisa, the Midrabanon, they have Moitzinos from Ibala. But from Toysus, it's Mashma that Toysus is will, willing to answer the Gemara by saying that you know how you, you know how, even though the Torah says she's Mutter, she's Asr, she's only Asr, Midrabanon. Only because of the reason that the rabbis would not take her away, because of that, Mukhrach, it's it has to be Dimidai Raisa Asar. Ha y have Xeris Chachamim, but if it would only be rabbinic, Kroivel Adas, it's reasonable, Shay Yigzur Af Midai Raisa Sharia, that they would ask her, even though Midai Raisa is permitted, Beferush, the Khsiv, the Hilai Nispasa. It says she wasn't forced, but if, if she was forced, she's permitted. Now, Rabasi asked, what about Lulav? So I, I was mad for the question because you're not pushing off Lulav completely because Lulav is still the rice of seven days.
But the Chida has another question. Because if you look in the Medrash on Parshas Emar, the Medrash Darshins Ulakachtem Lachem Biyoyim Arishain Biyoyim Afilu B'Shabbos. According to that, there is an explicit pasuk. Like Prismila. Right, like Prismila. Another pashtos of a Yom Harishain, Olakal of Yom is is b'Medina. But there is a there is a, a medrash, not in the Gemara, a medrash. Now it happens to be regarding this whole taz. There's a famous Chakir of the Prima Gadim. Um. In the Psicha Koyleles, where the the Prima Gadam wants to know, "Ve'isha ayin b'davar habami medrash chazal oy halacha l'moisha misinai v'yud gimel midos yesh koyach v'yad chachamim lasar." In other words, this din of the Taz is it only if the Torah says explicitly, or what if we learn it from a drasha? Now. According to uh, Rav Herzog, it's an interesting chakira. Because if the, if the reason is, Rabbi Isai, that it's not that the Chum don't have the power. They don't want to because the, of the Tzadokim. But if the whole din comes from a Gzeira, um, uh, you'd give a Midash and Rosh them, that the Tzadokim never agreed to in the first place, maybe they would. The bottom line is, um, it's really amazing. From our Sugi and Ksubis, you see a kasha on the Taz. I want to show you in the Shar HaMelech. The reason, one of the reasons I picked the Chida is, you know I love the Chida, but also the Shar HaMelech is very hard to read. He brings, I'll read to you here, Me'ahi de Garcina in Parag Narosh in Espatata. Daf Nun He, should say Nun Bez, Nun Aleph Amar Bez. Amar Avu Deshmol Eishas Yisrael Shenensa Asur Labayla. Shemat chilas one as v'shleifa baratzayin. V'kaswa toisus the chayshina de meday raisa kamar. Basar hachi. Ulavu de shmol einus de shar achman hechem eskachasa. V'hashal das rabbeinu zal. Umay parach begemar einus shar achman hechem eskachasa. Hechi parach kivan de befeiro shitiru meday raisa inlam kachacham lasar. Kamashi Kozov Haturei Zov Simen Kuf Yod Zayin By the way, the Ta, I want to just show you in the Rishonim already. The, do I have it here? Yeah. The Chiddush of the Ta is the Me'iri already said in Megillah Daf Gimel Amad Beis. Look over here, number 7. Yesh Metarts from Shalula V'Shar from Megillah I never alayim B'Feirosh Shir Nas M'Sham Sar Shut Min Adin Mitzat Sheinu Malacha V'Achaz Yesh Mem Chashas Malacha Dinu Sheyirchu other Achreinim say maybe they were afraid it wouldn't be in Niskabel. Uh, we discussed the Taz Hayadua in the following context. Just remind you. The Chachamim came along and they answered Pasakum. Um, what, what did I do? Yeah. The question is, how could they answer Pasakum? The Pasuk says, Al Devara Sholei Kidmo Eschem Balechem of Amayim. That Amon Amayim should have brought you bread. So it means the Torah is saying the bread of Goyim is Mutter. So how the Chachamim come along and answer it. But for our purposes, we brought it in Legabe Shoifar. And uh, apparently, it seems from Toysvis that Toysvis does not subscribe to. This Taz Hayadua. Okay, Rabbi Isai. Have a wonderful day. Can you hear me call it that in the Gemara, in our Gemara, too, but not being, the Chacham wouldn't be coming to uproot a mitzvah. It wouldn't be saying that, it would just be saying that the woman can't be, can't go back to the, can't go back to the husband. Right. It's not that, they're not uprooting any mitzvah. It's not like Lulav or, Show her that they're, you know, it's not going to be a mitzvah. Right. But they're uprooting a pasuk, though. Because there is a pasuk that says that a woman who's forced is mutter. So they say they only won't uproot a biblical commandment. 
but a biblical permissibility that they're not as, uh, you know, we have to understand why wouldn't they? By the, it's okay, I hear there, there, there is a difference. By the way, Rabbi Kivager says, regarding the halacha, that charging ribis to a nachri, the Torah seems to say it's a mitzvah to charge ribis to a nachri. The Chachamim gave an Isr Drabanan under certain circumstances. So Rabbi Kivager wanted to, uh, Rabbi Kivager says, so you see that the Chachamim could be oiker, even something which is a mitzvah ktsas. So Rabbi Kivager says, whenever the prohibition is somewhat based upon um, biblical source, they could be up, they could uproot a dairaisa. Lamaisa, According to that, this might be an answer. Why? Because, maybe according to this Rabbi Kivager, David, you ready for this? this is a, who's here? Ready? Rechidosh Noira. The Gemara brought, um, no. The Gemara actually brought a riot to Rava from the Hilai Nisbasa. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll hold it over here, okay? We'll hold it here. Shkayach. Shkayach. Rabbi. Yeah. Very quickly, but... You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.